Hello everyone, Frost here. Welcome back to a new classic WoW video. This is the seventh and final episode from the Vanilla Profession Overview series. In our previous episode we covered all the primary professions and fishing. Today we're going to discuss the last two remaining professions, cooking and first aid. I'm kinda happy that I finally managed to finish the series because it took a lot of time and research. As you might know, looking up online for a vanilla WoW profession guide will mostly give you results about how to level it from 1 to 300, rarely covering them as an overview or slightly more in depth. The purpose of the series was to help new and returning players choose the skills that suit their needs. So without further ado, let's explore. Cooking Cooks experiment with strange and wondrous ingredients gathered from the far corners of Azeroth. A dedicated chef is able to turn mundane ingredients, recently caught fish or leftover animal meat into detectable and nutritious meals. Cooking is a secondary profession, anyone can train to be a cook, no matter how many other professions they've devoted themselves to. Most cooking must be done over a heat source, either a cooking fire that you started yourself or an open stove. Though many cooking recipes utilize the meat from animals you've slain in the wilderness, the fishing profession also provides you with a great deal of stock to try out new recipes. The health benefits of Azerothian seafood are well documented. Cooking alone might not be the greatest skill to make gold, but it will definitely increase your gold per hour from fishing and grinding in certain spots. We'll give a couple of examples later on. But like we previously said, choosing professions solely for making gold is somehow a bit selfish and in contradiction with the nature of Vanilla WoW. Some trade skills are more suited for helping your guild and providing services for your close friends. Cooking is one of the skills that will enrich your World of Warcraft experience and while it's true that this skill will benefit some classes more than others, such as rogues for Tissel tea or hunters for providing pet snacks, in reality, everyone will benefit from not spending gold to purchase food. I remember a rogue from my original vanilla server that we used to take on our dungeon runs. He always traded each member's stamina spirit food buffs before we started the run. It wasn't much, but the 12 stam and 12 spirit sometimes saved us from a wipe. Either from the close calls when the tank had 1 HP, either from the spirit that allowed the priest to cast one more heal. Little things, but these things made me remember the rogue after 14 years. Let's get a bit into the gold making opportunities cooking can provide. First and foremost, you must have knowledge on what recipes can be sold on the auction house for profit. And the dishes that usually sell good are the ones that provide the well fed buff. The 8 stamina 8 spirit buff is sought after by leveling players up to level 40 used pretty often by the low bracket twinks and sometimes by the cheap level 60s. The raw materials for these buffs can be found all over Azeroth and they're usually easy to acquire. Jungle Stew, Giant Clam Scorcho, Shooting Turtle Biscuit, Barbecued Buzzard Wings, Hot Wolf Ribs, Roast Raptor, Carrion Surprise, Mystery Stew, Heavy Crocosilk Stew only for Horde and Tasty Lion Steak only for the Alliance. These usually sell for 1 to 3 gold a stack, with prices going up once the market gets stable. The 12 stamina 12 spirit food buff, the better version of our previous option. These are probably the most consumed food buff in classic, not only because it can be used by every class, but because it can be used in any scenario. From PvP to PvE, and the diversity of dish choice is there. Monster omelette, spiced chili crab, Tender Wolf Steak, Spider Sausage, and Heavy Codo Stew. These usually sell for 3 to 5 gold a stack, and the price tends to remain stable. The Mana per 5 second food buffs, normally these are best suited for healers, but one of the better options for casters also, especially in longer fights. Opposed to our previous food options, the raw materials for these come from fishing. I strongly suggest to check my fishing guide for more information. Smoked Sagefish, Sagefish Delight, and the famous Nightfin Soup. The prices for a stack of smoked Sagefish can be around 3 gold, 
Sagefish Delight about double, 6 gold, and Nightfiend Soup can go up to 20 gold per stack, since it's the best in slot food for the majority of mana users. Keep in mind that the prices are estimate, but during the timeline of Classic they can go even higher or lower. Speaking of high-end consumables, Grilled Squid will serve as best in slot for rogues, hunters and warriors until Smoked Desert Dumplings becomes available, making this the best consumable for DPS warriors and the food in vanilla with the highest amount of offensive stat. Rune Tomb Tuber Surprise would make some caster choose it over the Nightfin Soup, depends on how they manage their mana. Poach Sunscale Salmon will have a fine market as this will stack with mighty troll elixirs. And the only epic recipe for cooking in the game, Dirge Kicking Kimarok Steak, a food buff that will provide 25 stamina. Great buff for tanks and for the majority of the raid in resistance fights. Also great for PvP. These recipes will be the best money makers in game for the whole iteration. Some of them will be introduced later into the timeline, such as the Rune Tomb Tuber Surprise being added with the Dire Mole patch and the Smoke Desert Dumplings in the AQ patch and so on. The prices per stack for these are really subjective to the economy of the server and for some items like the Grilled Squid it matters what season you're currently in as this can be caught only during winter. Nevertheless, expect to pay between 15 and 30 gold per stack, with the dirge kicking stake going even higher. Now let's give a proper example on how to casually use cooking to make gold. First, we're going to venture in the eastern plaguelands, killing and skinning the plague hounds. This spot is an excellent source of thick and rugged leather. The hounds drop stackable grey items to vendor, but most importantly two types of meat. Red Wolf Meat and Tender Wolf Meat, with about 50% drop chance each. During one hour of grind I've managed to obtain 40 pieces of meat from each type. I gotta be honest, kind of slacked there. But I've used the Tender Wolf Meat to create Tender Wolf Steak and used the Red Wolf Meat to create Hot Wolf Ribs. The initial one hour of grind made me 27 gold from selling the leather, greens and greys but with cooking I made an extra 12 gold from crafting and selling the ribs and steaks, which puts me on a final 39 gold per hour, making this spot almost competitive with other high-end spots, but with less competition. This rule can be applied to a variety of spots, other professions like fishing and herbalism can provide diversity and freedom of movement, and of course, increase gold per hour. Another example of making gold with cooking is by purchasing meat or fish from the auction house and transform them into valuable goods. If you have honored reputation with a major city, you'll get 10% discount from vendors, and I believe it's rank 3 in PvP that will get you an extra 10%, making the spices go significantly down in price to a point where you can craft stuff and just vendor it. In this example, we purchased 400 turtle meats with prices between 1 silver and 120, and the shooting spices with 1 silver 27 coppers, making the craft for the turtle biscuit to a total of 2 silver and 37 coppers. The vendor value is 3 silver, which results in a 63 copper profit per craft and 13 silver per stack. Normally, you would want to sell them on the auction house for 1 gold plus a stack, not 60 silver at the vendor. The thing is that I just wanted to make a point. Turtle meat tends to go down in price, especially on fresh servers due to them being farmed in a variety of spots, such as Hillsbred Foothills, Simmering Flats, the Hinterlands and so on. This rule will apply to a variety of raw materials in the auction house, keep an eye out on the prices and trends. Some people abuse this to a point where they don't have to grind anymore. In vanilla, knowledge is gold. Other recipes worth mentioning are the Savory Deviat Delight, which provides a transformative buff, this will sell great always. Dragon Bread Chili can sell nice, and the price is directly related with the price of the small flame sacks that drop from the Dragonkins in Swamp of Sorrows, Wetlands and the Badlands. Check my gold guides for low level for more information. Tistel Tea will sell good, make sure to stock up Swift Tistel while it's cheap and try selling the tea on the auction house right before the raiding times. 
rogues get desperate to compete in DPS with Fury Warriors, and if there's none at the market, they will pay extra. Cooking is quite useful and I'd recommend anyone to pick it up and use the ingredients they get to increase their cooking skill and gold gains on the leveling journey and beyond. Help your friends with miniature buffs and open extra doors for fluxes of income to reach your backpack. First Aid First Aid might not need to be covered on a video and it's pretty straightforward. It's mandatory in Classic WoW and everyone must have it. All those on classes like Rogues or Warriors are obviously going to benefit more from it than let's say a Priest. Now there are a couple of ways to squeeze some extra silver with first aid. First example it's crafting and selling silk and heavy silk bandages. A stack of silk cloth vendors for 30 silver and a stack of silk bandages vendors for 40 silver. Sometimes, especially during a fresh launch experience, the prices of silk cloth can go under 40 silver on the auction house. And taking into consideration the fees, it might be better to craft bandages and vendor them for a non-taxable fixed price. The reason why silk is going so low on price is because the abundance of it that comes with the leveling process. Another example, whenever you go to purchase the expert first aid book from Terramore or Arati, you could also pick two or three extra manuals, including the Silk and Mage Wave ones. You could sell them at the auction house for an extra profit, 50 silver or 1 gold. But I guess that can be done with uh, the fishing and cooking manuals as well, as people will pay extra to skip an unwanted journey, and so would I. For some reason vanilla professions are underrated. And I believe that the reason is lack of knowledge and lack of awareness on the changing nature of the economy. The demands during the first 3 months will not be the same as the demands 6 or 12 months after release. Half of the gold making guides on this channel are made and suited for a mature economy and most professions will thrive during that time. The point is, don't pick a profession and expect to get rich from day 1. There's a saying that classic WoW is a marathon, not a sprint race, and the same principle will apply to professions. The way I see trading skills is more like an investment, a way in the future to make some passive and semi-passive income, thus making grinding for gold no longer a required task, just a thing of the past. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and a comment down below. Until next time. Stay frosty.